By the way, I do think, I mean, proto buffs can be really, really great if depending on the environment. So just like one little fun fact. Um, the, my last little, one of my last little tasks at Netflix involved a lot of type problems. In fact, I even wrote an entire, um, because it started off in a Mongo database, which was untyped, I actually wrote a library called Undefined. There we go. This one, which would li it literally takes in a whole a, a list of JSON responses and creates TypeScript code out of them. I know that's it's a it's it's rather ridiculous, but since I could I I literally could not figure out how to do this well. I actually just created a program that would create types for me because there were so many types. There's like 400 separate log messages. But the problem is, is that we had games in C++ that were emitting events to game runners in Go that had an auto doc in TypeScript. Like, how, how do you want to share 400 types? I mean, this makes sense. This is like a perfect protobuf situation, right? You have a, you have a type that is an agnostic kind of language independent specification, and then you can use it throughout your entire stack, right? So I thought protobuf was, proto was actually a pretty good use case there. I do want to throw one more thing in there. When we did this, we started with no types, no protobufs, no nothing, and we just raw dogged this. That's why I wrote that undefined. That's why I wrote undefined, just to get that thing done, because we didn't do anything. We actually did approach it with radical simplicity. Just get the thing done first and kind of discover the edge cases. And as we discovered them, then we upgraded our solution into something that makes some sort of sense. And so I was really happy with it.